does. So um, uh, again, we can all agree that this is how we would do number one on the worksheet. It's a pretty straightforward one. Paris is in France. Doesn't tell me that Paris is in Europe. France is in Europe. Doesn't tell me that Paris is in Europe. Not even a little bit, right? They're not even like just kind of like ooh weak reasons. They don't get me there at all. But Paris is in France and France is in Europe. Jointly, they get me to Paris is in Europe. Okay, let's look at number two. Many people think that when they die, their soul will live on in the afterlife. But when a person's eyes are destroyed, that person can no longer see. When the ears are significantly damaged, a person goes deaf. And when the brain is damaged, this damages one, one's ability to think. Since all of one's bodily abilities are permanently destroyed when the body dies, it follows that no conscious experience is possible after death. What's my conclusion here? No conscious experience is possible after death. That's statement seven, right? All right, so seven, that's my conclusion. What supports it most proximally? Yeah, we get, a, we get a very nice, the way that statements six and seven are kind of like linked together, the way that grammatically, it makes it really easy to see what they're up to. Since six, it follows that seven. Six is clearly, boy, that marker just gave up right when I decided to write with it. So yeah, since six, it follows that seven. Okay, good. What about the rest? What about two, four, uh, there's, yeah, there's a typo on this, so there's no three. Two, four, five, and one. What's going on there? Two, four, and five support six. I believe that. That seems about right. Do we all agree with this? Two, four, and five are all supporting six? How do they do it? Independently or jointly? Jointly, which is to say that if I said all of one's bodily abilities are permanently destroyed when the body dies, and you were like, really? And I said, well, when your eyes are destroyed, you can't see anymore. Is that a reason? Yes. It gets you a little bit there, right? Yes. And when I say, when your ears are significantly damaged, you go deaf. Like, that also is like, that's a reason to consider as well. And that plus the eye thing is like, well, it's two reasons. It's even more compelling. And then when I say, and with the brain too, damage the brain, you'll damage your ability to think. I've given three examples of bodily faculties, or of like kind of, how would I say this? Um, yeah, that your bodily abilities get destroyed when your body gets destroyed. And then I'm trying to say on six that this is how it works for all of your bodily abilities. What if I give you a fourth one? What if I said, if your nose is destroyed, your ability to smell goes away. Does it get a little bit stronger? So this seems like the independent reasons one, right? where like, it's getting a little bit stronger with each one that I add. If I took any one of them away, the remaining ones would still be reasons. There just wouldn't be as many of them. As opposed to this one, where one doesn't function as a reason at all, two doesn't function as a reason at all. It's only when we put them together that they function as a reason. I'd be tempted on this to say, what is it? There's no three, right? So four, five, six independently. I get why somebody might make them jointly, but I want to reserve that for those cases where the reason being given isn't a reason at all unless it gets this other thing that comes along with it. Same way that we did here with Paris is in France and France is in Europe. That gets me to Paris is in Europe. Neither one of them by themselves will, only together will they work at all. And in this one, it seems like each of them is an example of a generalization. The more examples I have, the stronger it gets. But I don't need any particular one in there. I could pull it out and it would still stand. Yeah. Two, four, five. There we go. Yeah. Two, four, five. And what's going on with one in this? Many people think that when they die, their soul will live on in the afterlife. That seems like it's saying the opposite of my conclusion. That's just setup, right? That's just rhetorical setup. This might be interesting because not everybody agrees with it. But here are my reasons. Yeah, OK. So yeah, one just doesn't belong in there at all. And it seems like this is, this is how we would map the rest of it. Shall we do three together? It's a little bit tricksy. Three says, Jen won't be coming to the party since her car is in the shop. Steven won't be coming to the party because he has to work. I didn't invite anybody else to the party. So it looks like no one is coming to the party. Conclusion? Six, no one's coming to the party. 
And why do I think that nobody's coming to the party? Is it because Jen's not coming? If Jen's not coming, do I have a reason to believe that nobody's coming? Maybe kind of like this last one, like it's, it's like Jen's not coming, like, oh, maybe nobody will come. Like I've got some reason, but a really weak one. Jen's not coming and Steven's not coming. Oh, now I'm really nervous. Jen's not coming, Steve's not coming, and I didn't invite anybody else. This seems like I've made a big jump, right? It's not Jen, Jen's not coming, Steve's not coming, and I didn't invite anybody else. Are these working jointly or independently? One and two are jointly? Oh, one and two, yeah. Jen won't be coming to the party. Why would I think that Jen's not coming to the party? So, Because her car's in the shop. Oh, now I believe you that Jen's not coming to the party. That seems more like one supports six somehow and two supports one, right? But that wouldn't be Not really, because Jen's not coming to the party gets me to, or it seems like it functions as a reason for no one is coming to the party without also telling me that her car is in the shop, right? It's not like Jen's not coming to the party and her car's in the shop and like, now I believe that no one's coming to the party. It's Jen's not coming to the party. Why? Why would I think Jen's not coming to the party? Because her car's in the shop. Two makes one more believable. So, so two. So just just because they seem related or that they're functioning together doesn't mean that they're jointly necessary to, to function as a reason, right? Yeah. In fact, what seems to be going on here is that two is giving me a reason to believe one, and one is functioning somehow as a reason for six. The same thing goes on with three and four. Stephen won't be coming to the party. Why should I believe that? Because he has to work. Oh, OK, I get it. Yeah, so three and four. And then we had five in there. And I can honestly see this going more than one way. I could see us saying that they're independent of one another, that each time you report somebody else who's not coming to the party, it's more and more plausible that nobody's going to come. I could also see somebody saying that if we say Steve's not coming, Jen's not coming, and nobody else was even invited, that these three jointly all make one very powerful reason. I could see that going both ways. I'm going to go ahead and make them jointly required for this reason for six, just because uh, I like drawing the braces, really. Yeah, you would have gotten credit for doing it this way, as a, or you could have gotten credit for doing it with all the arrows. I'm almost never going to give you some kind of assessment where I ask you to draw it, and then I try to figure out what you're doing. What I'll usually do is I'll say, here's an argument, and then I'll give you a whole bunch of maps, and say which of these maps fits the argument, and I'll do my best to make it so that only one is even plausible. Yeah. Or I'll do it the other way around. I'll give you a map, and then I'll give you a bunch of arguments, and I'll say which of these arguments fits the map and I'll try to make it so that only one is even plausible. Yeah. These are hard, these are hard to write multiple choice questions about. OK. Out uh, of time, I think the hardest one on this is the Barry Bonds one at the end. Um, you guys do know that all of these worksheets are posted on Canvas under modules, right? As they, as they become available, I post them to, to Canvas under modules. And also, you might notice that if you go there and look for these worksheets, that underneath each worksheet is also a solution set to that worksheet. Have you, see, have you noticed that yet? That's an important thing to notice, because what it sets up is I go over the material. We do the worksheet together. If we don't go over the whole thing, you have the answers to look at at home on Canvas. Then you get the homework assignment where you get three attempts to practice something. Then later on, you'll get the section quiz where you only get one chance at it, and then an exam. We're trying to make it so that you get lots of practice and lots of ability to get feedback early on. So please do make use of all of those resources. Questions? Comments about this? All right, your homework assignment is going to be more stuff on mapping. Good luck with it, and I'll see you guys on Monday. Have a good weekend.